Hey, there you are. Welcome to A Late Show. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. After 15 months of forced pandemic isolation, Americans are desperate to get out of the house and just do anything. Go to a restaurant, attend a ball game, do your late night show in front of a live audience. We've all been there. How many, how many more? Two more? Two. This is the last Wednesday. This is the final hump day. <laughs> Trying to make the most of it, you know? Treasure, treasure these moments. No one is more anxious to get out and do stuff than the man who won the presidency from his basement, Joe Biden. This morning, the president embarked on an eight-day trip to Europe. Well, that's fun. Biden's go to Euro. He's going to Euro, I just said. <laughs> He's going to see the sights, ride the rails, come back saying words like Lori and Zed, complaining about how bad our butter is over here. Of course, switching from double-fisting ice cream to double-fisting gelato. The tour starts in the UK, where Biden will sit down for a meeting with Boris Johnson, or as they're known by their political couple name, Bojo Jobai. <laughs> they're the hottest European-American pair since Oberkel, which, of course, was Obama, Angela Merkel, and Steve Urkel. Biden's goal is to strengthen America's bonds with Europe, especially NATO, but first he's going to have to win over the European leaders who have grown wary after four years of a more insular approach from his predecessor. Come on, Europe, you can't judge us. You had fascists, we had fascists. You have rulers that married their cousins, we have Rudy who married his cousin. You had Nosferatu, we have, we have Rudy. <laughs> potato, potato. The president's trip got off to a bit of a rough start. Last night, the White House press charter plane was delayed by cicadas. The flying insects had filled the plane's engines. Here's one journalist after getting the news. Get off my plane. <laughs> the bug delay left Biden's aides scrambling for another way to ferry the reporters overseas. Eventually, the White House was able to call in a new plane and a new pilot, but the plane was delayed again when it turned out the pilot was also a cicada. Reporters weren't the only ones who had to face the swarm on their way to Europe. Whoa! Forget the Secret Service, that man needs a SWAT team! Once every 17 years, Slam! The cicadas are all over DC. In fact, yesterday, the swarm cloud was so dense that it could actually be seen captured on weather radar. Never a comforting sign when your weather report sounds like the book of the Revelation. Uh, Wednesday, we're going to have swarms of locusts. Tomorrow, rivers of blood. Friday, fire will rain from the heavens, and you'll be trampled by the four horsemen of the apocalypse. So pack an umbrella. Over to Chip with sports. Chip? Thanks, Steve. <laughs> I'm guessing Biden hopes his trip goes just a tad smoother than the one just completed by Vice President Kamala Harris, Seen here avoiding Joe Manchin by pretending she's holding a phone. While Biden is off to meet with European leaders, Harris just got back from a trip to Central America. She went there after the president put her in charge of the border crisis. All right, kiddo, let's divvy up these international trips. I'm going to go eat, pray, love across the old country. How about you head south of the border? Try to solve a problem that no president of either party has been able to handle for decades. Take it easy on Air Force Two. The thing's chock full of cicadas. <laughs> Don't flood the engine, okay? One of my props just fell down for later. Joke we're doing a little bit later. <laughs> the trip did not go very smoothly. Smoother than that just went for me. The rockiest moments came when Harris told Guatemalan immigrants bluntly, do not come, after which she was blasted by progressives and Republicans. So, bipartisanship. Then, in an interview with Lester Holt, Harris struggled to answer this simple question. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, at some point, you know, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole, this whole, this whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. I haven't been to Europe, Lester. 
Just a random example for no particular reason. I have not been to, oh, I don't know, England, Brussels, Geneva, a cushy meeting with the G7 in Cornwall on June 11th. Is it too much to ask to have a slice of pizza with the queen? I assume she eats pizza, what with King Arthur's round table. <laughs> this was not a great answer for Harris, but also not a great question by Lester. If quarantine taught us anything, Lester, is that you don't need to go somewhere in person to work on it. The VP may not have visited the border, but I'm sure she's making lots of progress with it over Zoom. Border, you're on mute. Republicans attacked Harris and called on her to get a first-hand look at the border. Yeah, Republicans know that's how you solve any problem. You go there for a photo op. It's like the kids say, picks or you didn't fix. In other Central American news, El Salvador just became the first country to approve Bitcoin as legal currency. So their financial system should be rock solid unless Elon Musk tweets their flag and a frowny face. <laughs> this move will make the Central American nation the first in the world where businesses will have to accept Bitcoin for goods and services. That could be tough considering how much the value of Bitcoin fluctuates. Okay, your total comes to 575. Oops. Uh, no, uh, 45,600, uh, looks like I owe you a dollar. <laughs> At least the country can rest assured that this massive economic decision was made by the steady hand that is El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukele, who after making the announcement changed his Twitter photo to give himself Bitcoin laser eyes. Cause there's no better way to inspire confidence in your country's fiat currency than to give yourself mutant powers. That's why the UK's 20 pound note features Queen Elizabeth with adamantium claws. Here in the United States, we've got our own controversial overvalued resource, billionaires. There's a new reason to make their space trips a one-way ticket. You see, newly leaked IRS data shows that the 25 richest Americans, including Jeff Bezos, Michael Bloomberg, and Elon Musk paid little to nothing in federal income taxes. Well, that should make filing easy. Instead of attaching their W-2s, they can just staple on a picture of their lily white ass and tell the IRS to kiss it. This is particularly galling when it comes to Amazon's CEA, Jeff Bezos, who in 2007 paid nothing in federal income taxes, even as his company's stock price doubled. That is an outrage. The revolution starts today. Okay, we need pitchforks and some banners. Let's see what we got here. Uh, okay, free prime shipping on spiked baseball bats. That's good. Ooh, you know, while I'm here, I'm out of Nespresso pods. Inspirazione? What do I order? What's the purple one? It, is that? Okay, good. What was I talking about? Oh, right, right. Now, if you're wondering just how much did these billionaires not pay, it was $13.6 billion in federal income taxes during a period when their collective net worth increased by $401 billion, which is a true tax rate of 3.4%. But to be fair, they did spend a lot of those savings on charitable works like building giant flying penises. The reason the ultra-rich can dodge the IRS is because our government puts an emphasis on taxing labor income versus wealth. And much of the wealthy's wealth lies in things like vacation homes yachts, and shares in companies they run, which aren't considered taxable income, which is why smart eight-year-olds are now demanding the tooth fairy pay them in Tesla stock. In global news, yesterday was World Ocean Day, and we got a big gift this year because National Geographic recognized a new fifth ocean. Great, now we'll never find Nemo. Look, I'm sure this is scientifically important and all, but come on, science, did we really need a new ocean? Now I'm gonna feel old. I don't wanna tell my grandkids, I remember when there were only four oceans and mountains had these things called glaciers, they were cold. And some of Disney World was above water. Now hand me the feeding tube. Okay, in the future we eat out of tubes is the, what I'm selling there. So what do we got here? We got the Atlantic, the Pacific, the Indian, the Arctic, and now the Southern Ocean. For something so wet, that name is kind of dry. Plus, they're missing a great sponsorship opportunity here. Daddy could still get his penguin beak wet just by selling off the naming rights. Make it the Ocean Spray or the Pep Sea. 
The Southern Ocean is made up of what were previously known as the lowermost parts of the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. Okay, that's just a classic real estate move. I see what you're pulling. Well, it's a new neighborhood around Antarctica that's ironically very hot these days. It's called the Southern Ocean, but we're calling it SoO. <laughs> now that our new ocean is official, National Geographic said they'd put it on its maps and globes. Classic ploy by Big Globe to push product. Same reason that East and West Germany reunited. Now we've all got to buy new globes and throw our old ones in the ocean. I'm sorry, the new ocean. Anyway, it is a new ocean, and I want to make it feel welcome here on Earth. So I got it a sea warming gift, this, uh, this empty Dasani bottle. It'll help you get started in your garbage patch. Oh, and there it goes. Bye. See you in the river. And of course, a priceless necklace with a tragic romantic story attached to it. Near, far, where We all remember a few years back when former New York Congressman Anthony Weiner was rocked by a Twitter scandal in which Anthony showed his wiener. It was the most on-the-nose political sex scandal since the resignation of New Hampshire Senator Alexander Sheepfondler. <laughs> well, it looks like old Tony Weiner is hard up for cash because we just learned that he may sell his infamous crotch shot as an NFT. Now, NFT stands for non-fungible token and not, as I originally thought, non-floppy tallywhacker. Basically, Wiener is hoping that having exclusive rights to his famous photo will bring in tons of cash, which makes sense, because the only other way you could get a photo of Anthony Wiener's junk is to be a teenage girl on Twitter. But that's not the photo I want to talk about, no. It's the photo that the New York Post ran with their story, showing Anthony Wiener in a t-shirt that says LSSC, which stands for The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Come on, Anthony, you can't wear any other shirt or even wear no shirt at all? Wait, wait a second, Jim, can you zoom in? Damn it, you got it tattooed? Look, Anthony, I know you're down your luck right now. You'd be on OnlyFans if you only had fans. So maybe you can't afford a new t-shirt. So I'm gonna send you a new one, okay? This beautiful Jimmy Kimmel Live t-shirt, free of charge. And as always, on the back it says, the official talk show of Anthony Weiner's penis. <laughs> You're welcome, Jimmy. We got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Samuel L. Jackson and Padma Lakshmi. But when we come back, do vaccines make your blood magnetic? The answer might surprise you, but I hope it doesn't. <laughs> Stick around.